Hi everyone, and welcome to the channel. We're gonna venture into the new features within FreeCAD in the dev builds, also known as the weekly builds, of version 0.22, to see what's coming up in the future. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the general changes in FreeCAD. So we're not gonna to spend too long, we're just gonna give you an overview of some of them that are gonna appear in the newer versions. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at the sketcher changes. And this is where a number of different constraints and a number of different ways of constraining have been introduced. And I think you're going to like what's on offer for that one. So I hope you enjoy these videos and let's have a look at these changes in 0.22 of FreeCAD for the weekly builds. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. So I've opened up FreeCAD and you can see that I'm running 0.22.0 of the dev version. And this is just to highlight some of the new features that you're going to begin to see enrolled into FreeCAD as we move forward. So first of all, you can see there's a bit of a change in the layout on the start page. I'm going to create in the part, just something really simple. I'm creating a new document in there. I'm just gonna place in the cube to start with. I'm using the touchpad controls, this one here, so this one, if I hover over it, you can see that I've got my select, my zoom, my pan, rotate, etc. as I hover over that. The reason why I'm doing this, if I hold down my Alt key, because that's the shortcut that I'm using for rotate, and you can see this little sphere that's been added. And this shows you whereabouts you have placed the mouse over when you've started rotating this object. So if I place the mouse over here and hold down Alt, I get a sphere here and it rotates around that sphere. So I can hover over that corner there and turn it around there and over this corner. You can have that visual representation there. It can be disabled in the preferences, edit preferences. As you can see, this has changed as well. So we come down to the display, looking for the navigation. And in here you got the rotation center indicator and we have a sphere size. We can change that and the color and transparency. And we can uncheck that if we don't want it. Let's cancel out there. The other thing to look for is this one here. If I hover over this tool, this is a selection filter. And this is great because when we're selecting edges and vertices, it can be quite hard to select those. There are settings to get around that, like increasing the point size that I have here, and the edge size, and also something called the pick radius, which I've gone through in one of my other videos. But this selection filter can be changed. And it's very similar to something in Blender where we can actually go into edit mode and select vertices, edges, faces, etc. So I can come in here and select vertex selection and I can't select any of the edges but I can select the vertices of that box. Really good for when you're in something like the part design. Let's come over to the part design and what I'm going to do is create a body and we'll create a sketch in there and we'll go along the XY plane. I'll get to this task in a moment so don't worry about this. This is a change, but it can be set back. And we'll explain about this in a moment. X, Y plane and OK. And we're going to add, say, a rectangle in here. And you've got some lovely constraints that are coming in, new constraints, let's close that. Let's take that rectangle and just pad that. Okay, 
So at the moment, we got vertex selection. So let's say I wanted to add fillets to this. Let's go all selections, filter cleared. So I'm going to add some fillets to this. Hit the fillet. And now I want to click on the select in here. It's already selected. And I want to select the edges, but I accidentally select a face. So I have to click that again and try to select the edge. And I selected there and say I missed it. I've got like the vertex, etc. Well, because we got this selection mode, edge selection, I don't have to worry about selecting the faces by accident. I can select those edges quite easily. And see, I've missed those, so I can come in and select those. We don't have to select, we don't have to deselect or remove them from the list in the left hand side here by clicking on hit and delete. We have that in our filtering to make it a lot easier. Let's place that back on all and OK that. So let's have a look at the elephant in the room, the task panel, this one here. At the moment, you can see, well, it's not part of the model. Before, this task panel was inside the model as a tab. That can be easily solved by hovering over the task, so that title bar there, and starting to move it. As we move it, we can drop it on the screen. So this means that this can be placed on another monitor if we wanted to. We can dock it to, say, the left-hand side here. You notice this changes. This changes to be semi-transparent. So if I bring this over, so first of all, make sure I'm on touchpad. And what I'm going to do is move this over here, the task. And you can see that's transparent. And when we hover over this, this actually highlights. And I've got this toggle transparent mode here to make it fully transparent all the time. The thing with this is that I can take this and combine it with tabs. So this model, I can actually come in. And if I come down, making sure the whole panel is populated by that blue highlight and take my finger off the mouse pointer, then and now it's inside the model in its own tab. And that works just as normal. So if I came over to the sketcher and let's say we selected a face and created a sketch upon it, plain face and OK, the task tab will show as usual. Let's close that and we're back to the model. Now you notice when I took the task tab and placed it, say here, and dot it to this part here, it became transparent. And this is because we've got some additional modes here. So to get it back to normal, we use this one here. And this places it back into our panel. You can see that there. Let's place that here. And we've got this settings option here as well. If I click on that, we've got show and edit, hide on edit, auto task, and also none. So I could do an auto hide there. And that's vanished. And as we move over to this edge, we can bring it back. And that's for any of those panels. So I could do it with this one as well. And what I'm going to do is just take this and combine it with this in here. And we can bring the model out and bring that in to the left-hand side. You notice how it changes. The same with the tasks. Bring it into the left-hand side there. So we've got the tasks. And if I hover over this edge, it pops out. And if I come in and click, it pops out as well. So with a hovering over the edge, just bring the mouse pointer back. So come into the edge. And sometimes it flies out. If you get it just right. But if not, just bring the mouse back and it'll fly out. I'm going to come in and reset that. So let's bring the mouse pointer back and select this icon here. Click that. And I'm going to set that to none. So that's open all the time now. And let's bring back the normal setting. And this one here, toggle overlay, bring that back. Just going to take the tasks and drop it in to this panel down here, making sure the whole panel is highlighted 
and drop it in. So I've got the task within here, back to the old way. Now the transform tool, let's come into the model. Let's get rid of this sketch. There is a new transform tool. So I click on the cube, right click and transform. You notice that these planes have been added and this allows you to move it along that plane. But it doesn't look obvious when we're actually moving this in 3D space without any reference. So what I'm going to do is cancel that, click on the cube and delete it and come up to the part workbench. And I'm going to go into part, create primitives and I'm going to add a plane and create that plane. So we've got a plane there. Let's close the task. And now what I'm going to do is use the create part. Now the reason why I'm using the create part, and I can drop the plane in there, I don't have to, just gonna drop it in there, is that it's got an origin. I'm gonna click on the origin, press the space bar. So now you can see the planes. So I've got the X, Z plane there, the Y, Z plane there, they're all there. And I've got the plane in the center. This makes it easier to see what's happening with this. So that's right click and come up to transform. Now you notice that we've got the standard rotates here. So I'm rotating around this axis here, the Z axis. And if I look at where that Z axis sits along here, and I grab the blue plane and start moving this, move it out to say out here, you can see as I move it around the screen, so I'm going back here, and let's come up. You notice that I'm not deviating from one of the planes. So if we look again, you can see that I'm keeping this plane here. Think of this as a large square underneath. So you can see this X, Y plane. So you can see this plane here. As I move this out, say over here, the X, Y plane grows, but I'm not deviating from this plane. So I place it over here. And we look, you can see that the Y axis is still in line of where I've moved this. It's still in line. And that's say, let's move it right up here. Let's come around, you can see the Y axis is still in line there. So we're moving along. Basically, if we take this square, we increase the size of it, we're moving in line with that square. So if I took this square, and move this say over here. We are now moving along the axis that the square sits upon, which is the Y Z plane, the plane that the square sits on. Y Z plane. You can see that we're only a little way away from this Y axis. Let's actually reset ourselves so we can see what's going on. So I'm trying to reset myself basically in the center there. We can see what it's actually doing. So I'm going to take the red square and look where this red square sits. It sits, if I look from the right, it's in full view there. So if I move this up and over, and if we come over, you can see that if we drew a square, which is basically this one, this YZ plane, it stays on that plane. You can see that there. So one other thing we got is a project unit system. If we look down to the right, we have the unit system down here, which I've got a standard millimeters. I can change this to US. So we've got a project unit system of US there. Let's save this. And I'm going to set this to US. Hit enter. So now I'm going to start a new project, new project. I'm going to set this one to standard and place a cube in there. File, save as, set that one to standard. And let's do enough one. So create a new one. 
and we'll set this one to Imperial. Place a cube in there. So you can see we've got foot in there. And file, save as, set that one to IM. Let's close all. And we've got the recent files here. So let's first go for the standard. And we can see down here we've got the standard millimeters set and the cube is in standard millimeters. Close all. And that's this time go to the Imperial. See we've got the Imperial set. Click on the cube and we've got the Imperial measurement there. Finally, let's have a look at the US. I think we got the idea of this. US, and we got the US measurement, inches and pounds, and the cube is in inches. Also with the measurement side of things, if we drop down, we can see we've got a new entry in here for meter decimal. So we've got this additional here. And another thing to be wary of, if I take this cube and right click, I can now toggle the transparency. So I can click on toggle transparency and now we have a transparent cube. And this is great for such things as the part design. So I'll delete that cube and come over to the part design. And we'll create something in here. So let's create a body and create a sketch along the XY plane. Okay, zoomed in a bit there. And we'll create a sketch in here. That's place square in there and let's close that so I've got the square sitting there we'll pad it say 30 mil and I'm going to place a sketch on the side with a new sketch and I'm going to place a circle in here so I'm going to place a circle like so and close that I can select a face select that face there and right click and toggle transparency. So I've actually selected the object. This allows me to take the model, click on the sketch and do a pocket in there. And I can see how far that pocket's going into the object and increasing that pocket into there. So I get an idea from a transparent object of how far I'm pocketing into that object. And then when we want to toggle this back, all I have to do is right click, making sure I selected it, right click and toggle transparency and that toggles it back. So that's an overview of some of the general changes, some of the UI changes. In the newer version of FreeCAD, there are a lot of sketcher changes as well. And I'm gonna go over those in a separate video. And I'll place a link to that video in the description of this one. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you again soon. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.